In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an accurate sliding door sill panel for a VWT4 and making the inner and outer lower rear arch repair sections. The T4s are getting on a bit now, but are still very popular and do a lot of miles, but the bodywork on many is in need of attention. The sill section is relatively simple in form, but multiple folds can be hard to accurately replicate. So here is how I tackle it. I've measured some basic dimensions with a rule using a section of the original and I've drawn the folds measured from a single datum edge. The dotted lines are hidden detail and the fold lines need to be marked on the opposite side. It's very important to mark the lines from a single datum as this is going to help accuracy. For this task, I'm using a pair of odd leg calipers. If you haven't got a pair of these, then go buy one. The accuracy is going to rely on them. Mark each line from the datum edge using an engineer's rule to set the dimension. The smallest width fold on this part is 3mm long. I can't produce a 3mm fold with my tooling, so I have left it 5mm and will cut it off afterwards. I've marked all the lines on a test sample and marked a dot on each line just to make sure I fold on the line scribed and not another random line. The order in which I fold this part is important as tool clearance will prevent the folding if the wrong order is selected. I have to fold the 5mm section first in this case. I'm using another favourite tool for this which is my fly press. If you haven't got a fly press then go buy one. In all seriousness, they do cost a bit of money, but if you can afford it, it's one of the most used tools in my workshop, and I would rather sell my left arm than my fly press. There is actually a threaded stop on the press, so you can fold at repeat angles, but I hadn't set it yet and was guessing, hence over bending the last fold. On the first try, it's pretty close, but a bit short on one length, so I'm going to increase this by one mil. This affects the other succeeding fold positions. With the alteration made and another test sample compared, I'm happy with it now. Cutting the full length for the section, I'm using my guillotine. If you haven't got a guillotine, then start playing the lottery. They are expensive. I actually bought mine for £500, but in a right state. I media blasted and painted all the components, none of which could be moved around by hand. Tractor and forloader was used, plus the engine crane for inside. I have the knives reground by a company near Glastonbury, which was sent via courier. It's now like new, only not. Having folded the full length, we can see it came out like the samples, which is good. The section is straight until it gets to the ends, which needs to curve. So I have cut the ends to facilitate this, and will have to weld it back up in that shape. I have blasted some rust on the inner part of the rail and repaired some sections of it. I can then tack the new piece in place and with the rubber on, check the door isn't rubbing the seal. Looking from underneath, I want to check it's all okay. The rebuilding of the ends I'm doing in sections as it's less time consuming than trying to make it in one piece. Making it in one piece on this occasion would be difficult. There is more to do on the rear part and I'm tackling this in the same way. Making a sample and making sure it lines up with the door profile and position. I'm using a straight edge to make sure the repair is parallel with the door. Now I need to mark the fold of the arch. I've bent a strip of steel in both directions to be able to scribe a line. The fold line can be transferred to the opposite side by lining up the marks with the rule. With the outside now made and tacked in place, I can now make the inside. I'm going to make this in one piece and it's tricky. The same method of measuring and making patterns is used. The part tapers as it goes downwards, so two patterns in two locations is needed. Once folded, I check the fit with the outer in place and then remove the outer for better access to the inner. I built up the rear in sections, making sure the sliding door bump stop recess positioned the door parallel with the rest of the van when shut. I had to unbolt the door for access to finishing it off, but most of it was done with the door on, as checking the door gap was obviously required. And there we are, all welded and finished off. The rest of the arch is in good shape, apart from some minor corrosion to remove. I've done this with a spot blaster and then left it for a day. 
Where you can see rust has reappeared is where the rust hasn't been successfully removed and the process needs to be repeated. When rust doesn't reappear after a few days, it has been completely removed. All that's left to do is have a cup of tea. Please comment down below with any suggestions for videos. I'm happy to listen to whatever people want to know and if there's any improvements that can be made. The how-to videos seem to be more popular, so perhaps I'll do more of them. Cheers.